modify the curve actually. Okay, so I'm taking a curve and composing it. So it's like I have something, okay. So I have some wire in my hand, okay, which is twisted in a certain way, and I'm retwisting it some other way actually. Okay, without breaking it or without taking something out of it actually. Okay. So the question is that previous, you know, what do you call wire, and the new wire, does they have you know, same length actually? So then, then you can ask, okay, how about vectors, tangent vectors? So you have some tangent vector here and you have this twisted, you know, what will be the relationship with the tangent vector? The speed will also be changed, if the object is not changed. So you said, uh, if I have a curve, if I have a wire, uh -huh. and I twist it again, uh -huh. without changing the length again. So, so will this be new image with twists and with different things? Yes, 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 it will be. It will so be. like apparently, Apparently you will feel that okay the, the curve has changed actually, the diffeomorphism half of them have made change on it. But essentially those changes are, you know what we are saying that those changes are, okay. So we can ask, are those changes qualitative? Are quantitative actually? But does that shape will remain same, but there will be some property. Okay, obviously there, there will be things which will change. Sir, repeat the change to you. Object move correct only the speed change. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So what, why we want to do it basically? The key objective is this: that imagine I have a curve, you know, maybe a, you know, uh, you know, a curve which is traced by a particle which is moving, you know, invariantly. So I want to turn it into a curve, okay, or a path on which the particle is moving uniformly. Okay? Because you know dealing with the uniform things is much easier than you know what they call the other way around. So that's what we want to do. Okay? So what does what does beta is, is just simply the parameter You can have bunch of things Now you can ask several questions as 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 you can ask one question actually Okay. Proposition. So this proposition we we, proved, we have proved it in calculus actually. So I'm not going to do it again, huh? So this will be one way of reparameterization. But there can be lots of other ways of reparameterization. So reparameterization is not a unique thing. Okay. But if you reparameterize it with with any diffeomorphism, it's not going to, you know. Okay. So, so, the, so the proposition essentially is, and that, that actually we proved it in calculus, I'm not going to repeat it, you can you know, have a look from there as well, that if you compute the length of the curve, okay, on a part of interval, okay, so let, me, let, me, let me write it a bit more precisely. So, so imagine I have, I have this phi going from j to i, okay, so there are a few marks of them, and I have alpha, so like all these notations are same. The only thing that I am adding now is that imagine A B is you know a subset of J, okay, and phi of this A B is an interval C to D. Okay, so like taking this interval A to B and you know turning it into something what do you call C to D. The key claim is this that if you compute the length of the curve of alpha composition phi, you know, beta, okay, from A to B, okay, same as you know, after transforming it, so it's going to be same as C to B by that alpha. if you compute the length of the curve alpha from, from C to B, so kind of length is kind of an invariant quantity, it doesn't change, okay. I'm not writing this proof here because we have done it already, so I want to move forward. Because this is one of the key things. So let's play a game now. Okay? Let's play a game now. are connected to each other. Things happens for reason. But things doesn't happen for no reason. They happen for reason. Okay. So 
we have, you know, came up with this new structure, but there is a very interesting and you will see a very powerful reason for it. Okay, let's begin again. So imagine you have curve alpha, i from R3, and let us fix a point at T0 in this interval i at And this is important. Sir, so R3. R3, we are in. So let's keep this. So it's like I'm taking a point T0 from i. And this is important because I'm going to use it later. Let me define a function, it's called the arc length function. So it's a function that takes values from i, okay, and it gives me values. So arc length, if I if it is the arc length, what do you call it? I hope that we understand what do you mean by the arc length of a curve, essentially, in your previous idea, your intuitive idea. Okay? So it's a measure, it's a number actually. R positive. Okay. So S is going to be R positive from I into R. And then it's a map which takes a value from T. Okay. And how do you compute the arc length? So it and it gives you a number, and that number is this actually, the length of the curve from the interval T naught, the point that you have chosen to the T okay, of alpha prime of okay, alpha prime of U magnitude of it. So this is what the map I have defined. What are some of the immediate properties of this map? Okay. Do you see any trouble with this map? It's continuous. Yes. Okay. I don't need to tell you. So S is S is continuous. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's continuous. Obviously, it's integral of this thing actually. Uh, and it's also C1 class. Why it's C1 class? Because you have fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so I can differentiate it. So if I differentiate S prime, what I'm going to get? S is continuous. And in particular, it's a C1 class. But in that case, so, so, so like this should be a nice function actually. Think the fundamental theorem of calculus works under certain assumptions. So we must have some properties of this. But I mean in fact we do have that property basically because we have assumed alpha to be smooth actually. It's smooth. Okay, so you're not gonna have some you know stupid thing coming out of what do you call it derivative when it's not difficult. Are you getting the point? So we are fine with it. By so in fact, we can say that it's it's with some care it's C1 class function. S is C1 class function. So if it is C1 class, I can differentiate it, and I'm gonna get what? I'm gonna get S prime, and S prime would be what? Give me. So the S prime of t is going to be the speed. Of the fundamental theorem of calculus. The, okay, so it's like the magnitude of alpha prime of t. Okay. Are you happy with it? Yes. Yeah. You can get this. Sir, we have alpha cause in the curve. And? Curve. Curve's definition is here. Go back and see the definition of curve. I hope that yesterday we defined curve. You see that what assumptions we have. So we have sufficient smoothness. Okay. I want one thing. So regularity is not sufficient for this. This is something that we have already. Okay. Regularity of the curve is important if you want to see the S or if you want your S to be a diffeomorphism. So for being diffeomorphism, you need the non-zeroness of essentially what do you call it? So, so in fact, if in fact I can say that if so if if it's a non-stop curve, okay, it's a it's a regular curve, then then I can see that S is diffeomorphism. 
as is, I can, I can treat this arc length as, as diploma of one. What will happen if alpha prime is zero? I mean, what, what would be the wrong with it actually? Why you can't invert it? Actually, uh, what I want to do, okay, essentially what I want to do, so I want to take my arbitrary curve and it, I want to parameterize into the number of the arc length. And now, you know, in, in order to parameterize into the, in the term of arc length, you need a diffeomorphism. And that S is going to be the rule of diffeomorphism. So the question is that what if this guy becomes zero? What would be diffeomorphism? Make charge if you want them to score strictly one of the one of the qualities. If this is this is zero, then if you want to make strictly one of them. You can we haven't mentioned monotonicity here, so this is what the is a head. But monotonicity is a consequence of it. So you can you can you can you can have that. But I, I, you know, can, can we argue without using monotonicity? Anyway, it's a good point to reflect on it. So, you know, think about it. Okay. What if the alpha prime of t is zero? Why you can't? But if if you have actually this condition satisfied, then the rest is if you map it. So you you know it's it's good function actually. It's smooth. You can differentiate it. You can you know invert it and so on and so forth. <coughs> All right. almost there, the, the key thing that we want to reach actually. Okay? So what I want to do, that you know, I just don't want to reach to the formula, I don't want to throw you the formulas, I want to basically, you know, I want to make sure that we all are going through a thinking process actually. So things are connected with each other, they are not just a random set of ideas actually, they have relationship with each other actually. So what we did, we defined reparameterization, so now what we want to do, we want to define, you know, we want to reparameterize the things in a particular manner, okay, in the terms of the arc length. And uh, I want arc length to be diffeomorphism. So it would be diffeomorphism if this is true. So if this is true, we are, if your curve is non stop we are fine. So I can go back and forth in S actually, okay, smoothly. So back, go back and forth, I and, I and R basically. Okay, so, so so this is not a key thing to do. So it's, it's it's a calculus thing actually. Okay, so if you wish, we can you know write a justification for it. But let me you know try to reach where I want to reach at least today. So if the curve is regular, S is smooth. This is what key thing is. Now take the S and operate it onto the whole I. Okay. okay. Take the curve and operate it onto the whole I. And so it's a you know it's, it's going to be the bunch of points in R actually. Okay. And call that guy J. Okay. And call that guy J. Okay. So I can see S as a map. From what do you call I into J. Now we are assuming that our, you know it follows from the regularity of the curve that S is invertible. So there must be some inverse actually of that, which takes you from J to I. So let's call that map T. Okay. So I'm calling that T as a map for. So the first, the S was a function of T, and yeah, now the, you know, of you know, the T is a function of S actually. So this is what that essentially I would like to have. And consider the beta, so I'm defining now beta of S as that I want to compose alpha, okay, with the T and operate everything onto S actually. So it's going to be the map from where to where. So T takes me from J to I. So it's going to take me from J to I. 
and alpha is going to take me from I to R3. R3. So this guy is a map from J to R3. Okay, you are happy with it? Okay. Now I want to mention the, the key property, the reason that we have done you know, all this analysis actually, the basic analysis, is that let's see the tangent vector field corresponding to basically this guy. So let's compute the derivative of it. Okay. Okay. So I'm calculating derivative with respect to S. We have to keep this thing in hand. What's going to happen on the other side? So you're going to have alpha prime of T of S into T of S. Agree? Now, what I know about S prime of T is this that. So, can I, can I have a conclusion about T prime of S? What would be the T prime of S? So what is the relationship between S and T? You know, the S composition T is identical. identical. So this is what inverse. is what do you call they are the inverse of each other. Inverse of each other. So I know the derivative of S prime. So what would huh? so they are inverse of each other actually. So T is the inverse of the S. So we can treat that as the identity. And this is not a double. So that's identity. Okay? So I'm doing what? And I'm saying what? I'm saying that I know the S prime of T. Okay? The compute T prime of S actually for me. So in other words, T is S inverse. So it's like a T of S is S inverse. So if I compute the S prime of T, what are you going to get? One over S prime of T. S prime of T. Agreed? But S prime of T is what? Alpha prime of T. Okay? So I can say that this guy is now going to be alpha prime of T of S divided by you know, alpha prime of T, but the T is a function of S actually. And it's magnitude. This is the notes you can see from there. Now, what's a good thing about this beta prime of S? Think about it. And now, compute the magnitude of beta prime of S. What would be that? One unit is one. So you're going to get one. Okay? So what is the moral of all this story? <laughs> I don't know alpha. We would have, yes. So it's like, okay, this would be the one of the big trouble actually. So that, that's what we want to avoid. Okay, so like things reveal. Okay, things reveal. Okay, bhai. Sharo, ek jo hai. Point A B hai, and it's a good point actually that if you if 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 we assume if we allow this to be zero, then you know this guy doesn't make sense actually. So, so this also kind of reinforces that your curve should be regular enough. What is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is take any curve, take any curve, okay, alpha from I into R3, okay? Just like, you know, representing the movement of a particle, you know, what do you call in this space actually. Now this motion, you know, the, the way a particle is moving on this particle is, you know, on this path is going to be, I don't know, whether uniform or not uniform, okay? But if you compute, okay, if you compute what do you call, or if you represent the same curve, or you reparameterize the same curve by its arc length, the good thing that we are gonna, you're gonna get, what do you call, uh, uh, you know, as an outcome of this basically, that's something that you are previously seeing as, you know, 
as a trajectory of something that is moving non-uniformly. Now you can, you can turn the same thing into more than that unit. Okay. More than that unit speed. So, but the no. uniform so that's what the uniformity is actually. So this is what the uniformity is, that it, it has what you call unit speed. Okay. And in the in the words of you know, a very wise guy, this this result tells us something very philosophically deep. Okay? So it's a very philosophically deep result. Shall I put all this into a, in the form of a theorem? Okay. Shall I put this all in the form of a theorem? The theorem would be, if I, if I put all this together, theorem would be, every, not curve, but regular curve, okay, every regular curve, uh, can be parameterized by arc length. Can be parameterized by arc length. Okay. So it can be parameterized by arc length. So in other words, something which appears non-uniform to it you can have an equivalent motion, okay, to that non-uniform motion, okay, but that equivalent motion is going to be uniform. So in its, so in their magnitude they would be the same actually, but they, in their appearance they are different, okay. And as I said that in the wise, in, 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 in the word of a word of a very wise guy, something that I learned is that this result. Is as a very philosophical result basically, and it tells you something very important about um, uh, the curves. So it says that imagine there are two people, you and me, we all, living on two different, you know, universes, but those universes are curves actually. Okay, the universes are curves. Okay, so me and some other guy. And we are communicating with each other through some source. Okay? So, how we can tell actually, so it's like they want to tell each other that, okay, you know, how your universe is different from my universe actually, or how my universe is different from your universe. So, when you are online, obviously, you can tell that in the terms of what you call metric, the way you measure distances actually. So, that's the only way that you can tell the things, you know, what do you call essentially the arc length. Huh? So, so this theorem is telling you that if two different people are living on two different, what do you call, universes, which are, uh, you know, uh, uh, curves, okay, then they will find no difference between their universes. They will not be able to spot any differences. And what does this mean? Difference in terms of? In, in terms of any, basically. So it's like, okay, you know, if someone is telling us, so one of the obvious differences they can tell that, okay, if, if one world is, you know, Certainly. one universe is regular, another is not regular, okay, then they spot something interesting actually, that okay. But if, you know, you know, the both worlds are, you know, the both universes are regular, okay, the both curves on which they are living are regular, okay, then they will never be able to distinguish between their universes. So if one is saying that, okay, that's the way I, you know, measure my distances, okay, the other is going to see, it's the precisely same way that I, you know, but you can I measure distances, because they are using the same scale. And hence, what do you call, the meta conclusion of all this is that there is no intrinsic geometry of curves actually. You can't understand curves intrinsically. You have to go outside to make sense of it. Actually. You have to go somewhere else actually to make sense of it. So you can't sit within. Thank God we are not living in curves. Okay, so we can 